I think that we can start at the, at the most foundational level by making sure that uh, when a clinician, and not just physicians, but any clinician, enters into a training program, whether it be for nursing, whether it be uh, to become a physician, a nurse practitioner, a physician's assistant, or whatever the cl clinical role is, that the principles of diversity and equity and justice are included in the curriculum. I think that there's a, that's a new paradigm. As a medical student, you know, 30 plus years ago, there was very little talk about, you know, diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice in our curriculum. We talked about healthcare disparities, but we talked about them at a very superficial level. Um, there's more diabetes, for example, in African Americans, therefore there's more kidney disease, and therefore more patients on dialysis. But we didn't go much deeper than that. But I think medical school curricula and other health professions curricula have really come a long way in addressing um, at a foundational level diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice as a way of understanding why healthcare disparities exist. If one doesn't understand how diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice relate to healthcare disparities, then you won't get it when you're encountering a patient for whom those four elements are part of the healthcare disparities. It then has to continue at all levels of, of education and training. So our residency programs uh, and advanced training for other clinicians have to further advance the understanding. And so one of the ways is, you know, in the typical educational conference, uh, for example, for a resident, is that whatever the topic, we try to explore how do diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice relate to the healthcare disparities in that field. So when I talk about chronic kidney disease to a group of medical residents, they have to understand how 200 years of oppression have led to generational inequality that, and how that ultimately ties to healthcare disparities. They have to understand how inclusion and justice may help to overcome some of those disparities. And then we have to take it a step further. For the practicing clinician who's out in the community, sees patients every day, who's not in an ivory tower, we have to make sure that we're including it in our continuing medical education curricula. Here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the Commonwealth has just created a requirement for training in diversity, inclusion, and implicit bias for relicensure. So I think that's an important step that the Commonwealth has taken and that other states are likely to follow because all these issues ultimately tie into healthcare disparities. And if our clinicians don't understand them, we aren't going to move the needle.